Chapter 2. Personal Hygiene In this chapter, you will learn why personal hygiene is important, how and when to wash your hands the professional way, and personal grooming. You will also learn about gloves, hand sanitizers and aprons, as well as clothing, jewelry, and hair restraints. Most importantly, you will learn safe food begins with high standards of personal hygiene and cleanliness on the part of the employee. A food handler's lack of personal hygiene can cause food to become contaminated and may result in customers becoming ill. Personal hygiene means keeping yourself clean and healthy. The human body carries germs inside and out, germs that can contaminate the food that customers eat or the surfaces they touch. By practicing the personal hygiene habits taught in this chapter, you can protect yourself from being the cause of foodborne illness. Washing your hands. Washing your hands well is one of the most important good health habits. It sounds too easy, but hand washing really works to wash away germs from your hands. Improper hand washing can increase the spread of infectious diseases, causing people to become ill. Hand washing is one of the most important steps in food safety. These are the times you must wash your hands. Before going on duty. Before you touch anything used to prepare food. Before putting on gloves. Before touching utensils that will touch food. Before touching foods that will not be cooked. After handling raw food, especially meats, fish, and poultry. After handling eggs. After touching your face, hair, or any other part of your body. After handling trash and take out the garbage. After handling dirty dishes. After cleaning or using other toxic substances. There are also times when you should wash your hands twice before starting work, immediately after using the restroom and again when you return to work, coming back from break, especially after eating, drinking or smoking, after coughing, sneezing or blowing your nose, anytime hands come into contact with bodily fluids, including cuts and burns. These aren't the only hand washing times. Knowing when to wash requires common sense on your part. Germs, such as bacteria and viruses, can grow easily, so think of your hands and fingernails as always contaminated. Just because they look clean does not mean they are clean. To properly wash your hands, you must dampen your hands with warm running water and apply soap. Then rub your hands together, scrubbing hands and arms for a minimum of 10 to 15 seconds. You must also use a nail brush to clean thoroughly under your fingernails. Scrubbing your nails is necessary for your hands to be clean. Then rinse your hands completely under warm running water. Dry your hands thoroughly with a single-use towel or an air dryer. Do not use a shared towel. Use a clean paper towel to open the door if needed. Do not touch the door handle or you may recontaminate your hands. Finally, do not use hand lotion. It may allow bacteria to grow. One thing to note is that if the water is not hot or hand washing supplies are not available, tell your supervisor immediately. Another thing to remember is that plastic gloves can also spread germs. Wash your hands before putting on gloves and change gloves between tasks. Remember to always wash your hands. Gloves and sanitizers do not replace hand washing. Wash hands and arms first before putting on gloves. Wash hands and arms first before applying hand sanitizer. When gloves are damaged or when you change tasks, take off your old gloves, wash your hands and arms and put on fresh gloves. You must also remember, your apron is not a towel. Do not wipe your hands on it. In addition, if you touch your apron, you must properly wash your hands after. You must change to a fresh apron if your apron gets dirty and before leaving the kitchen or food preparation area. Bare hand contact. Infected food employees are the source of contamination in more than two thirds of the foodborne disease outbreaks reported in the United States with a bacterial or viral cause. Most of these outbreaks involve fecal oral agents that infected employees were shedding at the time the food was prepared. The organisms were spread to the food because of poor or non-existent hand washing procedures. In addition, infected cuts, burns or boils on hands can result in contamination of food. Food regulations have traditionally required two methods of preventing the spread of foodborne disease by the fecal oral mode of transmission. The first method is the prohibition of food workers from preparing food when they are infectious. The second method is requiring thorough and frequent hand washing. As a final barrier, bare hand contact with ready-to-eat food should be minimized and suitable utensils such as spatulas, tongs, deli papers or single-use gloves should be used. 
Any alternative to this requirement must address how food workers will be managed to prevent food contamination and how management will ensure that food employees thoroughly and frequently wash hands. There are times when food employees may contact exposed, ready-to-eat food with their bare hands if the establishment does not serve a highly susceptible population such as the elderly, the very young, or people with susceptible immune systems. And the following requirements are met. First, food workers acknowledge receiving training on proper hand washing, when to wash, where to wash, proper fingernail maintenance, risks of bare hand contact, good hygienic practices, employee health policies, jewelry prohibition, double hand washing, nail brushing, hand antiseptic after washing, incentive programs, as well as other methods approved by the regulatory authority. In order to comply with this requirement, signed employee statements must be kept at the food establishment. Second, food workers must use two or more control measures, such as double hand washing, nail brushing, hand antiseptic after washing, incentive programs, or other methods approved by the regulatory authority. In order to comply with this requirement, a written plan must be kept at the food establishment. Thirdly, there must be documentation of any corrective actions taken. In order to comply with this requirement, there must be written records of who, what, when, where, and how corrections are made. And most importantly, in order for bare hand contact with prepared food, employees must practice proper hand washing and nail brushing. Personal grooming. Personal grooming is an important part in keeping a clean work environment. A few things to remember about personal grooming are bathe every day, especially work days. Wear clean clothes to work daily, and clean means first time worn since washing. Keep hair clean and under control. Use a hair restraint if necessary. Keep fingernails clean and short. Do not wear nail polish or false fingernails which may contaminate food. Do not wear jewelry. It may hold contaminants that could come into contact with food or cause injury if they get caught in equipment. Do not use cosmetics or perfumes or colognes around food as they may contaminate food. Change clothes if they become contaminated. Personal behaviors. There are a few personal behaviors food workers must comply with in order to maintain a clean work environment. For example, Food service personnel, while on duty, must refrain from eating, drinking, or smoking in any of the food preparation or storage areas. Smoke, eat, and drink only in designated areas. If you use tobacco, do not smoke or chew it while you are working or when you are near food or dishwashing areas. Smoke only while you're on a break. Do not eat or chew gum or tobacco on duty. Use only the assigned break areas. And be sure that if you do smoke, you wash your hands thoroughly before you return to work. Every once in a while you'll need to cough or sneeze, be sure and cover your nose and mouth with a tissue or your hand, or turn your face to your shoulder or the crook of your elbow. Of course, double wash your hands immediately after. Most establishments as well as health departments discourage having any food or drink in the preparation area. For safety's sake, it's best to keep food or drink limited to designated break areas. One exception to the rule is for those employees working in an area where there is excessive heat, such as the grill area. If your employee permits drinking in this area, drink liquid in a way that would not contaminate food, utensils, or any service items, such as a container with a lid and a straw. On the cook line, use a container with a lid, straw, and handle. In some areas, the health department requires that the beverage containers have a lid and a handle, but no straw. Just be sure and check with your local health department to learn what is permitted. Finally, do not sit or lean on countertops, tables, equipment, or other services where food is prepared and served. Restricted areas. There are certain restrictions when it comes to animals in restaurants. First, employees may not handle animals while on duty, except for fish or shellfish in display tanks, and if they do, they must properly wash their hands afterwards. Animals are not permitted on the restaurant premises with the exception of support animals for the disabled or police patrol dogs when necessary for work purposes. This exception also applies to food service employees who require the use of a support animal. On a different note, only employees who are on duty and assigned to the operation of the kitchen are allowed in the food preparation, storage or dishwashing areas. This includes delivery drivers, repair persons and pesticide applicators. It is the manager's responsibility to exclude visitors from entering the kitchen, except in cases where a supervised brief visit or tour is given. 
Children are not allowed in food preparation, storage, or dishwashing areas. Small hands carry germs, and busy kitchens can be dangerous.